In this video, we'll go through loading a program, setting up the table, operation settings, and running a program. Before we can run a program, we have to warm up the spindle, calibrate the laser, load the program, and set up pods and material. Warm the spindle up if the machine has been sitting idle for more than six hours. There is also a reminder when you first press the cycle start after a power up. Only run the spindle warm up program with the core tool inserted as shown. You may need to lower the Z axis or the spindle to see it. If there isn't a core tool in the spindle, you will need to do a tool change. First, verify the location or the position number of the core tool. It's usually found in position number one. There's a get new tool button to change the tool. It's located under the setup display and the tool library function button. Note the current tool number and verify that that position is empty or open on the machine. Click in the new tool field and change the number to the position that the core bit is located in. In this case, position number one. Then press the get new tool button to perform the tool change. The tool currently in the spindle will first be placed back into the position that it came from. Then it can pick up the new tool. Move the spindle to the back of the table to minimize water on the floor before running the spindle warm-up program. The button can be found under the operate display and manual function. Press the button to start the program. It will start running the spindle at low RPMs and gradually increase at timed intervals. The spindle will stop when the program ends. Next, we'll set up the table, which includes verifying the laser's calibration, loading a program, projecting, and setting up the pods and parts. Verify the calibration by going to the Operate Display and the Auto Function buttons. Then, press the Laser button to ensure that the laser information is displayed. And now, we can project the calibration holes onto the table. There are four holes machined into the corners of the table. The circles projected should surround the machined holes. Verify that each fits accurately. And always turn the laser off when it's not in use. Now you can load the program, either manually or you can scan the job sheet if you've printed one. Choose to display the G-code information and either select Load G-code and browse to its location or scan G-code and scan your job sheet. When a program is loaded or active, it will be displayed on the control. By both showing the drawing of the part on the table and the G-code program itself. Next, get the needed vacuum pods and vacuum lines on the table. Connect the vacuum lines to the pod and also the manifold on the machine. Insert the vacuum line into the fitting and press firmly to connect. Tug slightly to ensure that each is properly secured. Choose an available pair of ports from the vacuum manifold and repeat the process. The vacuum line going to the top fitting of your pod must go to the correct fitting on your vacuum manifold. Either the inside row or outside row depending how it was connected upon install. Turn all the vacuum ports being used into their on position. Next, spray water 
onto the table and the vacuum pods. The vacuum system is designed to use water as its sealant. Now press the laser cup projection button to project the proper location of the vacuum cups on the machine table. Place each pod into its proper location so that the lines of the laser match the grid of the pod. Now with all pods into place, we'll want to lock them securely into that position. To do that, press the vacuum button to display the vacuum information and controls. Pressing the vacuum on button will turn the vacuum system on and apply vacuum only to the bottom of the pods. Many factors play a role in the amount of vacuum possible in the area, such as altitude and barometric pressure. We'll be using these three buttons for the top of the pod after the material is placed on them. First, confirm that each pod is securely fastened by slightly kicking on each one. Using a block of wood to lay your material on the pods will reduce the wear and tear. The float button will apply a slight amount of air pressure to the top of the pods, which makes for easier positioning of the parts. Project the outline of the material blank by going to the laser display and choosing the material button. Also, verify that the material thickness is set correctly. If not, click in the field and enter the proper value. Now you can align the material blank with the projected material image. Because the float is on, the part should move very easily, so you can adjust and tap it into the laser's position. And lock that part into place by pressing the top vac button. Give each part a tap to ensure that it is firmly held down by the vacuum. You can also project the geometry if you choose. Geometry projects the finished part. And now, before running the program, is the area safe and clear of obstructions? Are the water shields back into place? Be safe before pressing the cycle start button to run the program. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.